You're passionate about something, right? Well, imagine for a second that despite all of your hard work, you just never improve. And I don't mean the feeling that there's always more improvement to be made. I mean the feeling that with more time and energy, your proficiency only gets worse. I'm sure everyone will be able to relate to that first part about always feeling bad in comparison. But the feeling I'm really talking about is a much darker, colder one that I still think everyone can relate to in one way or another. But it's a feeling that's also often unexplored just because of how corrosive it is, and that very feeling is exactly what broke me in this little manga called Beat and Motion. But first, this manga sorta has a story behind it. Back in 2021, Shueisha, or the owners of Shonen Jump, decided to make a little game show where rookie mangaka could team up with veteran editors, and they'd do a little Fortnite battle royale, and whoever claims the dub gets their manga serialized, and later down the line made into an anime. So the stakes literally couldn't have been higher, because a guaranteed anime adaptation is a pretty fucking big deal. On top of that, there is like no room for these people to feel comfortable because some of the biggest names in manga would be the judges. Yeah, anyway, this guy one because why the fuck wouldn't he? This competition wasn't fair whatsoever. He legit got one of the best editors of all time on his team. I mean, this guy edited Chainsaw Man, Spy Family, Don to Don, and so, so much more. All the other editors were kind of just like, okay, they'd have one popular series and everything else would just be okay. I first heard about this manga right after it won, and honestly, based on the concept, it seemed really cool. I was hoping for something sort of like Bakuman, but after it won, things kind of went quiet. I mean, that's what you would expect, right? But it ended in 2021, and for a long time, people were wondering where the manga was. Until just this last month, because finally the first chapter was released. So after this long wait, let me go check it out. I'm sure it won't completely change how I feel in life and relate to every single insecurity that I have on a personal level to a degree that feels like the manga was made personally for me. It did. Beat in Motion starts off with a boy passionate about animation. He even seemed extraordinarily talented. Praise from his teachers, parental support, the only thing that seemingly didn't think he was good were his peers. Relentlessly picked on, called creepy for using students as reference, all of this, it made him quit his one true passion. Years after leaving behind his one true passion, he finds another one to pursue. Music. And this time he actually has fun. He has friends with the same passion and dreams of a career playing music as well as marrying the idol of his dreams, being a star. But all of that was just childish ignorance. To quote the manga exactly here, The first time I became painfully aware that I had no talent was the summer festival. Only our friends came to see us. Kids plugged their ears. The cover band who played after us got all the attention, and none of my bandmates even noticed. When an average person shows interest in something, that's the beginning of a tragedy. Despite his endless passion, it's nothing in the face of reality, in the face of mediocrity. He gave this his everything, and yet nothing came of it. This is what made me crack. That feeling, it'll destroy a person. And I think it really roots itself inside of passion. If you really love something, you'll obviously want to keep improving at it. But improvement always slows down. At first, yeah, everything is going to be exciting and new, easy to improve upon. But as you get better, a 1% skill increase could be like 10, 20, hell, 50 hours. And honestly, it's hard to let go of that constant dopamine hit from improvement. I felt this too, and I'm sure you'll be able to relate in some way. Hell, with YouTube editing, it's a big struggle because I don't even know where to begin to improve. But obviously at the beginning, it's super fun and easy to make improvements. But that could apply to anything, literally anything, basketball, baseball, hell, even League of Legends. The feeling he's having though, it really isn't that. It's not just that his improvement slowed down, it's that it stopped altogether. We even see him say that it felt like they were climbing an escalator going the wrong way, performing to empty venues paying to do shows, and all for no reward. It's different. It's not just the pain of losing improvement. He's likely still improving, but there's no tangible number to it. It's all invisible to him because he is obsessed with the idea of growth. You can see that a lot in YouTubers, streamers, or hell, even myself. YouTube ranks every video based on views, and even if you think it's your best video, YouTube might put it at the bottom of the list. Especially when you're a smaller creator, it feels like you're just stuck, performing to an empty venue. But with YouTube, it's different. I'd even say that it's actually not as bad as how he feels. I mean, I can't physically see that no one's there. I just see a number. But he, he sees an empty room in front of him. In quote-unquote improvement culture, you'd call this a plateau, right? And breaking them is possible, I promise, but it's hard. Sometimes really, really hard. And it's extremely easy to mental block yourself on something like that, like we see him do. After those crushing feelings, he starts to wonder if even his funeral will be like this. The band fizzles out and he slowly distances itself from his friends, becoming a shell of who he was. 
just empty inside. When he does go out, he just tries pushing his failures onto others, crushing their dreams too. Until one night after hanging out with friends, he's forced to walk a girl home. She's pretty cute, he thinks to himself. She even seems kind of interested in him. But all of a sudden, she kicks him into oncoming traffic. Well... Damn, I didn't know this was gonna become an isekai. Or, so I thought. Really, it was just to scare him, because she's fed up with his soulless, dream-crushing personality. She says, today is your death. To him, this is kind of a sign that he needs to start again and stop being so sorry for himself, just because he failed one thing. This is the end of his old self and the beginning of a new. At first, he brushes off what she said, but after thinking about it, he is miserable. Ever since his dreams crumbled, he is a miserable loser. He has to accept what he thought, and he's gotta change it. And the key to that is to keep dreaming. I think this death to his ego is really what he needed. He needed to see himself from a third person and realize that dreaming is kind of what makes someone human. Without it, you kind of become a toxic, soulless pit. Maybe since you're a filthy weeb, one day you want to go to Japan. That's still a dream. Maybe you want to work towards a goal on your project. That's a dream. If you let go of all of those and just live your life day by day without direction and aspiration, you're more so a miserable robot than a person. That's what he realized. And him realizing that is what sets him back on the path of dreaming, but not in the same way he once was. Was. He didn't return to music. That was only a replacement for his original true love in life, animation. We see him kind of rekindle that flame, slowly learning more, looking back on what he used to be able to do in animation, deciding to gamble everything on this because if he fails, he's gonna have to live a normal, boring, empty life. This is the only dream that matters to him and he's going to do everything to pursue it. He's doing all of this in the pursuit of art. He just wants to create something special. And we see him do that, taking it one step at a time, making small animations, going to school, and then he finally finished something he's truly proud of. He hits upload and he goes to sleep. Whilst asleep, he has a confusing dream. Two versions of himself, the kid version from when he quit art and the adult version with a new drive for animation. The kid was frozen in a hallway and the grown-up took his hand. He doesn't know which one was him, but that doesn't matter, he came to save himself and rekindle that dream finally living the life he wanted, and he wakes up to his animation doing amazing on Twitter, his idol even reaching out to do a collab. All of this is just the first chapter, and that final moment is absolutely amazing. It really shows that sometimes in life, you just have to follow what you've always loved. Instead of what's cool or trendy, be yourself. Chase what you love. It'll pay off no matter what, even if that payoff is only happiness. As well, it shows that dreams are really what make people human, and that's what gave me hope after seeing the destruction of his downfall. This manga is a roller coaster that really isn't similar to anything else I've experienced, and I hope it continues to show the insecurities and struggles that come with aspirations and following those, because it feels like they aren't really tackled in that way often. Since that chapter, two more have dropped and both of them have built on it, especially chapter 3 because it shows how insecurity can get in there and how sometimes it's hard to keep being fearless and dreaming, especially when things don't seem to be going your way. But hop on this manga before it gets big, and subscribe while you're at it.